This is the Crescent City Connection Podcast, bringing you the hottest takes from the 504 to the 225. Look at the speed of this kid. Look at that. Behind the back. Into the hole for two. Zion Williamson plus one. This is the first edition of the Crescent City Connection Podcast. Welcome. We got a lot of good stuff lined up for you today. We got guys JJ, Bradley, Bobby, all local guys here to talk about Saints Pelicans. I'm a Hand it off to them. Let them tell you a little bit about themselves. JJ, you want to start it off? Yeah, my name's JJ. Um, been a lifelong Saints, Pelicans, LSU fan. Really, to be honest with you, been talking about making a podcast like this for a long time. Got a few of my buddies to, together, convinced them all to do it. And uh, really, it all spurred from ESPN. All they really talk about is Cowboys, Lakers. I mean, you don't really hear nothing about New Orleans sports, LSU, nothing. You could watch ESPN all day. So we're going to try to be the voice of the people of Louisiana, and uh, let's get it going. How y'all doing? Bradley here, lifelong Saints fan, lifelong LSU fan, Pelicans. I'm even going to sprinkle in a little River Parish football for you guys. We're going to have fun with this. Let's go. Going on, guys. Bobby over here. All around sports, love everything about it. Saints, Pelicans, Tigers, whatever you want to do. Riverside alumni, <laughs> ready to talk about it all. Let's get it. And I'm your host, Justin, the moderator, I guess you could say. Um, obviously, like these guys, lifelong fan of all sports, New Orleans, LSU. So we got a lot of good stuff we're going to cover for you guys, and we hope you enjoy it. Well, we're going to jump straight into the Anthony Davis blockbuster trade. He's on his way to Los Angeles. We're going to talk a little bit about what we got for him and what we sent out. Um, So we'll start off with JJ, uh, initial reaction to the Anthony Davis trade. Yeah, actually, before I give an initial reaction on that, I just want to give a shout out to Gail Benson. Great hire, hire in David Griffin, got rid of Dell Demps. David Griffin, one of the most respected GMs in the whole NBA. And she took out her her paycheck and, and pulled that off. And From David Griffin, they had all the talks about our training staff, using the same training staff as the Saints. His first move, going to get Aaron Nelson from the Suns, one of the best trainers in all the NBA. So, And then from there, he went get Trajan Langdon. He was the GM of the Nets, and look what he did with the Nets, all them young guys. So we're going to need his scouting in this draft coming up. We got a lot of picks, and... uh, so basically, we went from one of the worst front offices and training staffs in the NBA automatically to top 10. So that's big. Uh, initial reaction on this trade, I really think David Griffin got the most that he possibly could. I mean, it's one of the biggest hauls in the history of the NBA for a single player. And Ball, Hart, Ingram. Uh, I think Ball is going to really thrive in uh, Gentry's up and down system. Um, I mean, if you go back all the way to LeBron's the beginning, his whole career, I mean, he really never progressed young guys. He always had other all-stars around him, and he really doesn't play good with young guys. I think the young guys moving to another team, a fresh start, it's going to be like a whole new, refreshing start to their careers right here. I think they could all thrive. And the picks, he really, he really did a good job acquiring the most possible picks to build us for the future, possible, possibly win a championship in the next five years. Yeah, and I mean, we have, a, we have five to seven years of Lakers picks to plan what we want to do, so there's opportunity there. Brad, initial reactions? Yeah, like Josh said, we really got a lot. I mean, obviously we lost Anthony Davis, but what we got for him is our future. We got the fourth overall pick. We got Lonzo Ball. We got Josh Hart. And we have first-round picks in the future. Like Justin just said, we have first-round picks for the next five, six years. So the Pelicans are really planning for the future. But with the talent that they have, that doesn't mean we can't win right now. Mm -hmm. We will be able to win right now. But I like how we kind of kill two birds with one stone. Yep. We're going to win right now, and we're going to win for the next five or six. Time. Yes, we're building. We're building something special. We're going to be building around Zion Williamson. And now we got, we're going to have another first-round pick to come in with Zion. And that's if we don't trade off that pick. We all seen the Bradley Beal news this morning. I like that. I've been saying that for the last week. I'd really like to see one vet come in with all yeah. these young guys. And I feel like Bradley Beal would fit perfectly because we need a knockdown shooter. And that's Beal. what Bradley Beal is. Yeah, and I mean, we're going to dig into that a little bit more later. We just kind of wanted to see, you know, initial reactions from everybody as far as this AD trade, him getting sent to L.A. So, I mean... Bobby, what do you have to say about it? 
I mean, not to continue on what these guys said, but a couple concerns is hopefully Ball can stay healthy. He hasn't played a whole season. And Ingram yet. with the blood clots. Her, her, hopefully Ingram wants to resign once he becomes a free agent. Hart is already rocking Pelican, Pelicans. Oh yeah, he's all He's, I love it already. You I'm, see, they're ready I for the love fresh it. Start. I love it. I'm just hoping that they want to stay after their contract is up. They're still young. They just came from LA. Now they're going to New Orleans. In football, that'd be a great thing. This is basketball. We're not really basketball city. So hopefully. This whole trade changes the culture, and they yeah. they stay, and then people ride this way. To really and talk about that a little bit more too. If you really break down Ball and Ingram stats when LeBron went down last year, their stats all skyrocket. I mean, oh yeah, Ingram stepped went up, stepped he up. He was almost around that thirty points per game clip for like a good ten stretch of games, and uh, I think they're all gonna play better. Without LeBron, to be honest, that's not saying LeBron's a bad player, but LeBron's used to playing with other vets his way. Yeah. You don't want to play his with guys, guys his way. Right, I agree. And back to what Bobby said, he said um, he said something about the culture, and I kind of want to bring that up because I mean, these young guys have this chance to come in and and build this culture around Zion and and have the city back them. I mean, we literally have the GM of the Brooklyn Nets who did exactly that last year. So I mean. I think they are really excited to come here and, 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 and create a culture and a good city. So, and, and to bounce off that point real quick, really, like, if I'm building my team, I want all guys that want to be here, they're going to go out there, play their ass off every night, and I'll take that over talent. Like, the Spurs never had the most talented team. Look at that dynasty. They all went out there, played as a team, played hard every game, and they wanted to be there. They all took into the culture. And that look at the Patriots. They never have the most talent. And to build on that a little bit, the one thing the Pelicans will have, and I know that, is defense. We're going to be a very good defensive team. If there's one thing I can say about Lonzo, the kid can play defense. Of course, he has to work on his jump shot. Of course, he has to work on his free throws. But the kid can play defense. He can guard the ball. That's very important. Then we're bringing in a guy like Ingram. Guy 6'9". He's a 6'9", 3", maybe a little bit of a stretch four, but I mean, we don't we don't exactly know what our lineup's going to be, but it's it's positionless ball now in the NBA anyway, so we're going to be very good on the defensive side, of course, with Zion coming in, tr- tracking down balls from behind. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be real fun to and watch. And then G- uh, Gentry is really one of the best offensive minds in basketball. Every t- I mean, look, Julius Randle wasn't even considered a really good offensive player. He came here. His offense took off. I mean... A, like a few other players come here and Gentry just takes their offensive game to another level. So I expect to see all of their offensive games build under Gentry. Yeah. So uh, who's excited to see LeVar Ball, though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's already talking and saying this and that. It's just like, just let you And he got uh, Lonzo wearing the shirt, no L.A. Nola, no L.A. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just hope it's not a huge distraction. But, I mean... It is what it is. Alonzo's on his way, and and if he if he's here in a Pelicans uniform next year, I I, I know I'm going to be rooting for him. So, yeah, I mean, Alonzo is one of the best lob ball throwers in the league, and Zion can go get it with the best of them. So that's going to create a bunch of top ten highlights this year. Get ready. Yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting. We uh we should we should see a little bit more Pelicans on ESPN as far as uh, highlights and and. Zion Lonzo coverage but from there I I think we want to just jump into the package breakdown let's just talk about you know exactly what we what we got for AD and 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 stuff like that so I'm gonna let JJ take over here and and break it down a little bit well I mean basically you know you know most of the details Anthony Davis goes to the Lakers we get back Brandon Ingram Lonzo Ball Josh Hart the number four pick in this draft so we got one and four the top eight protected in 2021. It becomes unprotected in 2022. We get an unprotected swap in 23, unprotected first in 24, and another unprotected swap in 25. The swap, he, David Griffin negotiated the swaps into the deal because if you don't know, the NBA has a rule to where you cannot trade two consecutive first round picks. So instead of getting the two consecutive first round picks in between each year, He put a swap in there. You could also trade the swap, and you could trade the pick. Also, Griffin, basically what happened was the Lakers wanted to keep Kuzma so much that Griffin got 
whatever he wanted with these, with these picks. And he even got the trade to be completed July 6th, which raised our salary cap from 15 to 19 million, and it kind of screwed the Lakers. They had the money if they waited to the end of July to sign a max player, but Griffin said nah, and now that salary goes to 23 million with AD's bonus. They don't have enough money to fill their roster. They only have five players under roster. Good luck filling the rest of that roster with 23.7 million. Yeah, and you're definitely not signing another max. No. Not a superstar who's going to take a cut at least. Right. So, I mean, there's a little breakdown of the package. And and I think one of the big things everybody's been talking about lately is that fourth pick as, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep it? Are we going to package it in a trade? So I think we want to get into that a little bit. I mean, Brad, what do you think, you know, if if you're a Griffin right now, fourth pick, what are you doing? What do you think they're going to do? Like I said, the ideal move to me. Let's go after Bradley Beal. We have all this young talent. Let's get that one vet to come in and be a knockdown shooter and be a leader. I mean, we have all these defensive guys. We're going to need a shooter. Obviously, Josh Hart can shoot the ball. But we need that one starting two that can really come in and be a knockdown guy. That's the ideal situation. Let's say the Pelicans keep the pick. There's many ways they can go. I mean, if we want a shooter that bad, why not stretch a little bit and go after Cam Reddish at the four pick? Some people say that might be a reach. Which it might be, but you don't know. If he comes into the league and he's the guy that a lot of people think he can be, then you then you got to steal with that fourth pick. But there's many options with that fourth pick, and like I said, we have we have so many picks in the future. So the Pelicans, we're building for the future, but don't be surprised if we make some noise in 2019. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, I really don't think we should keep the fourth pick. I feel like my wishful thinking, of course, is just me, not from our GM mind. It's my wishful thinking is we trade ball with the fourth pick to Memphis because they're trying to get rid of Conley already, but maybe they keep him, let him mentor ball for their future, we'll get the number two pick, stay young, and go after Morant. I like that. Yeah. All around ball player. I mean, I'm easy, I'm easy. Re- I'm really high on Morant, too. I mean, you know, yeah, he, Morant don't really have he's a weakness. Just explosive. I mean, his only weakness, I think, is he's a little thin, but he is explosive. Like no, he is he, eighteen years old. Yeah, he is eighteen. But I mean, he, I, I really see Russell Westbrook in his game, but like a more sharing Russell Westbrook. Yeah, you know? almost like a Damian Lillard because his shot is so pure. I really think John Morant is the most can't miss guy in this draft. And don't get it twisted. I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form you don't take Zion. You have to take Zion number one. But with John ja Morant's package that he's bringing, he just can't miss. You can't miss with a guy like that. And I like what Bobby said. If we would want to trade the fourth pick with Lonzo Ball to Memphis, now we're coming with the one and two pick. Now we're really trying to win this year. Yeah, that'd be nasty. Uh, I got a little different take. What I would do on this, I would trade the number four pick. Atlanta's shopping their three picks right now, 8, 10, and 17. I Honestly, I just don't feel like there's much drop-off between four and eight. And like you said... You like Cam Reddish. Guess what? You probably can get Cam Reddish at eight. That's true. So you can go get Cam Reddish at eight. Go pick up your center, Jackson oh, well. Hayes from Texas at 10. 17, go take a chance on one of the shooters, Tyler Harrow from Kentucky or Cameron Johnson out of UNC, two knockdown shooters. I'm pretty big on Tyler Hero. That's a good point, Josh. I really like Tyler Hero. He only had one year in Kentucky, but that's a six foot six shooting guard slash three. And that kid can play. A lot of people say he's just a shooter, but that's not true. That's an all-around ball player. Yeah, what, what I feel like in the first round, like, just get a, as many darts as you can to throw at that dart board. That's, that raises your chances of one of them hitting a bullseye. I mean, between 8, 10, and 17, you're going to hit on at least one of them, if not two. And that's two more key players in your lineup or off the bench that you can bring in to contribute. Don't forget, we got a couple second rounders too that we can maybe snag somebody late. Yeah, yeah, yeah two two actually second rounders that I can uh, I really like that we can get are two second rounders at thirty nine and fifty seven. Two guys you could probably get at either one of those spots. LSU fans might know him, Tremont Waters. If he wasn't as small as he is, he would be a sure first rounder. Now, size, it's been shown time and time again. It really doesn't mean that much. If you got the skills, you can ball out. The, my next guy, real quick, Kyle Guy from Virginia. If you watched the, the national championship this year, how many big shots did he hit? 
And he really got a lot of comparisons to J.J. Redick to me. So you can go take two little flyers and try to get you a shooter in the, in the second round. Like Josh said, Tremont Waters, if the guy was six foot one, six foot two, he'd be a surefire. Top 10 pick, maybe. That guy can play. And Kyle Guy, that's another great one. That's a veteran. I mean, a veteran in the college he level. Already he already plays like he a stayed, vet. He stayed at college for three, four years. He won a national championship. I feel like that'd be a really, really good second round pick. But we have so many options. That's the main thing that I like right now for the Pelicans. We have so many options. We could do so much. I'm excited to see what we, what we do at the end of the day. So we want to jump into the free agents now. You know, there's a bunch of free agents out there that we think could be a good fit to build a little bit more around Zion and the young pieces we have now after the uh, L.A. trade. So let's talk free agents. Best fit for Zion as far as centers, shooters, you know. Who you got, J.J.? Since the NBA introduced the three-point line, only eight players have done this. 50, 40, 90. 50 percent from the field, 40 percent from three, 90 percent from the free throw line. Eight players, Larry Bird, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Reggie Miller, Steve Nash, Dirk Nowinski, Mark Price, and a guy named Malcolm Brogdon from the Bucks. He dealt with a lot of injuries last year, but he's a great young player, a great defender. He could stretch the floor, shoot. He just plays like a vet. I think, I think that'd be a really good free agent to go after right there. Really yeah, good. I mean, we are definitely in need of a shooter more now than ever. I like that a lot. I agree. I think that's the main focus right now. We have to pick up a shooter and to kind of build off of that. Why not J.J. Redick? Bring in a guy like J.J. He's a veteran, and he's just a knockdown shooter. It don't even matter to him. He could come off the bench or he can start. That's the type of guy we need. And another free agent, why not try to bring back Julius Randle? Everybody mm-hmm. knows he opted out of his player option, but the only reason he opted out is because he was opting out of a $9 million deal. He knows he's worth more than $9 million. He's probably worth somewhere to $15, $16 million. I want to bring Julius back because I think Julius is a very nice piece, and he's obviously a guy that doesn't mind playing in New Orleans. And like Josh said a little bit earlier, we need guys that want to be here. That's half of the battle. I need you to want to be here, and I need you to play hard. I think Julius can do that for us. Yeah, I'll go to war any, any day of the week with guys that want to be here and go out there and and just our dogs. Julius Randle's a dog. So Griffin was the GM at the Nets, right? No, he was a GM with the Cavs. Our GM, um, our yeah, GM uh, now was Trajan with Langdon the Nets. Langdon Trajan Langdon was the. He's our executive GM now. All right, I knew one of them came from the Nets. So yeah. let's bring in somebody that was with the Nets that just went to the playoffs with them for the first time in how long? D'Angelo Russell. Why not bring in a ice water vein shooter who you know can take over the game? Look what he did for the Nets. They're getting rid of him for Kyrie Irving, which I don't really see why because he's already put his stamp on there. Now you're going to restart with Kyrie. I don't really see it, but D'Angelo Russell, why not? Why not? Yeah, I like D'Lo too. I think he would he would probably fit in a little bit. But, I mean, then you basically have the Lakers team from – from what a year or two Yeah, ago. I agree with Justin. I like D'Lo, but not only are then we going to have the Lakers team from 2015, <laughs> we're going to have a bunch of point guards because no matter what Drew, I know it's yeah. positionless, he's still a point guard. Lonzo is a point guard. D'Angelo is a point guard. So that's why I'm trying to go the route as a shooting guard. I really like J.J. Redick. <clears throat> I like Brogdon from the Bucks. And, I mean, if not those two, that's when you go with a guy like Cam Reddish in the draft. Right, and I think you got to put Danny Green's name in there, Danny too. Green's he's a gonna, good one. I really like Danny yeah, Green. He just he won have? a championship. That guy knows how to win. Spurs I really like Danny Green. And Toronto. Yeah, two. All with Kawhi. Uh, with, uh, with Kawhi. Uh, yeah. Yeah, another but, guy, too, real quick. Um, the Pacers are shot. They have two centers right now. they got a log jam at center between Miles Turner and Sabonis. And right now, I'd, I would try to shop the number four pick for Miles Turner. He could stretch the floor on offense, shooting 39% from three. And on defense, he led the whole NBA in blocks. I, I really want to put a, a good shooting center alongside Zion since he has a lack of shooting right now. I mean, I, I think that will develop over time. But to put a good shooting center alongside him, I think would make our offense Work very good. And then on defense, you got two guys that are going to be leading the league in shot blocking, protect the paint, hold down the paint. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty high on Miles Turner, too. He's another young guy. Um, 
He's in at about twenty million a year too. So like eighteen mil to twenty twenty three. So you you would have him locked down for the next four years. Yeah. Too. So he he'd be he'd be all in. Um, well, if I, you wanna, I agree with the center, but if you wanna go just completely defense, DeAndre Jordan, that's a big force. Been on a lot of teams. Yeah, Miles Turner. He had more blocks per game than Jordan. And I mean, and the lo- thing with Jordan is Jordan. That's his best aspect of his game. Miles Turner is versatile. He can give you the three to shot. The post up in the block in the defense. I mean, and Jordan's I, a forty percent free throw shooter. I agree with Josh just because of that one factor. DeAndre Jordan, he's a very good defensive player, but what else does he bring to the table? He cannot shoot free throws. He cannot shoot anything outside of the paint. And a guy like Miles Turner is the complete opposite. He's a he's a five that can stretch the four, floor. You have to respect his three point shot. Like Josh said, he shot thirty nine percent from That's behind lethal. the line. That's really lethal for a five. Yes, I indeed. really like that. I mean, since we're on since we're on the subject of fives, I mean, there, there's also some, so some other availabilities. You got Al Horford out of Boston. I know he's a little bit older. I love Al Horford. Brooke, Brooke Lopez. You know, his name's been thrown around a little bit. You know, um, Marcus All actually another another free agent center. I'm sure he'll be expensive, but championship center that's, now. That's, that's that's another. Yeah, he's a champion for sure. So. I mean, I guess center and shooter is kind of where our uh, where our focus should be as as far as free agents or maybe trade possibilities. So, I guess we kind of covered enough free agent stuff. So let's get into the good stuff and talk about the the man, the myth, the legend that will be here soon enough, Mr. Zion Williamson out of Duke. I mean, we're all super stoked. I mean, this kid, he's got so much potential. He's just super explosive, fun to watch, great personality. I really think he's going to be a good fit in New Orleans, you know. So let's dig into that a little bit. Maybe talk about some strengths, weaknesses, comparisons even. So be rad. You want to start it off? Yeah, I've been on Zion for about five, six years now. I saw a video on Twitter when he was a ninth grader. He, he got in some type of trouble at school or whatever. His coach's punishment for him, he had to play in the JV game. And this guy dropped 60 points in a JV game in high school. And don't get it twisted, he was dunking on guys. He was hitting threes. It was just an absolute high, highlight reel. And ever since that day, I've been on Zion, and he hasn't disappointed since. He was one of the best high school, probably the best high school player in the last 10 years. And then last year at Duke, he proved that we have never seen anything like Zion before. How many guys have you seen? actually break their shoe on a jab step. I mean, that guy looks like something off of a movie. I can. The only comparison I have to Zion Williamson is one of the monsters from Space Jam. <laughs> That's the only thing I got. The, the guy is just unheard of. I've never seen anything like him before. I really, really think Zion could be special. JJ? Yeah, I mean, how many 6'8", 285-pound basketball players have you seen that could handle the ball like a guard? take off like he's about to leave the arena like they're usually on the defensive line for football right. yeah <laughs> like my the best comparison i probably got for the guy is if bo jackson decided to play basketball i mean it's it's ridiculous uh, face of the team for the next 15 years uh, he's the truth man like if he could if he could develop the three and and at least hit it at like 34 35 percent Imagine having to go out to Zion and close out on his shot, give you that pump fake, and then it's a windmill on your center. It's going to be nasty. Like, Hopefully it's on AD, though. Yeah, we That's need at least we one on. poster on AD, and we're going to get a fat head, put it up somewhere in the studio we got over here. Somewhere. It's definitely coming if it happens, for yes, sure. Indeed. But, uh... To go back to my point to beginning about our culture, this guy can come in and have his own culture. This he can take over the city with his personality, the way he walks, talks, the way he plays. Everybody's amazed by it. People are gonna want to come see this guy, and he can take over the city. These young guys can can just follow with him, be a part of it, and this place can be Pelicans, Saints, capital. It's not just Saints and oh, we got a basketball team. Pelicans can be a household name for the next five years with this atmosphere we have, all because of we got the number one pick and we're taking Zion. And to bounce off that real quick, AD had his chance. He, he really never had the personality of a, of a number one. He, he's not an alpha. From what I've seen of Zion at Duke, he was an alpha. He, he wanted to carry that Duke team. He wanted to always take the big shot. And like, not saying Davis... Didn't want to take the big shot, but he 
he just it didn't look like he had the characteristics, the personality to be alpha to to carry a team to be the team's number one and win a championship with that team. Yeah, I agree. AD, I mean, he literally would rather be Robin than Batman. Yeah, it's pretty much what he's going to now. But you know, as far as uh, Zion comparisons, let's uh let's jump on that a little bit more. See what see what B Rad from the boot has to say about that. Like I said, that's one of the things about Zion that scares people a little bit. He doesn't really have a comparison. Some people might say LeBron James. That works a little bit for me, but not really. And I mean, that's that's just kind of that's the unknown factor with him. We don't have a comparison, but that's also one of the good things. We've never seen anything like him. We've never seen a six foot eight, two hundred and seventy five pound small forward slash power forward that can handle the ball, that can do it all. And like Josh said, he's gonna he's gonna get better at shooting the ball. He's gonna work on that. But all you really need to look at is this past year at Duke. After he blew out his shoe and he went down for a few weeks, where was Duke? They, they weren't Duke. They were not Duke without Zion. He was the leader of that team, and now we need him to be the leader of the New Orleans Pelicans, and I think he will be. And then by him, I, I think it says a lot about his character, too. He could have just not even came back for Duke that exactly. year. He didn't have to. He could have exactly. been like, look, look, I'm going to protect my career. I, I, I'm about to go make a bunch of money in, in the NBA. Would it? I'm not like what is Duke? Everything. It's, it's not worth the risk. But he had he gave a commitment to Duke, and he said no. I'm gonna when I get healthy, I'm gonna come back and play for Duke and play all out and try to win a national championship. And I think that said a lot about Zion right there. Yeah, for sure. Zion is definitely a a good character kind of guy. I, I think that's already understood. Bobby, what you got to say? I mean, just to go off of jo- uh, Josh, he wants championships, as he can, as you can see. He had no reason to come back to play for Duke after that incident. Millions of dollars on the line. Just like you see in college football, people aren't playing for the bowl games mm-hmm. anymore if it doesn't mean anything, because they have millions on the line. This guy wants championships. He wanted that that whole resume to come into the NBA, look at what I can do already. Yeah, no matter what, he would have been the number one pick. He didn't have to play. No. And that's one thing you can't teach. You can't teach that dog and somebody. And kind of like what Josh said, no matter what anybody says, Anthony Davis was not a dog. And that's nothing against his game on the court. I'm talking about his heart. I'm talking about wanting to be a leader. I'm talking about what Justin said, wanting to be Batman, not Robin. That's what I like about Zion. He's just a flat-out dog. He's going to come into New Orleans with an attitude, and he's going to bring it to the whole organization, and I really just can't wait to see it. Yeah, if you're giving a player the Supermax and giving him the face of your franchise, you can't be giving a player a Supermax. You can't give Robin the Supermax. The Supermax needs to go to Batman. I mean, you, you can't have two Supermaxes. you got to give your Supermax to Batman. Unless and Zion's Batman, son. This guy might be Superman, though. <laughs> yeah, even better. That's a good comparison for Zion right there. Superman. Right? I, mean, I mean, comparisons like for me as far as Zion Williamson. I mean, Draymond Green on steroids, maybe. Maybe a little bit of Charles Barkley, you know. But like all these guys said, there's, there's, it's so hard to compare him to anyone because we've never seen anything like this. It's, 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 it's going to be crazy. And then real quick, like, uh, like Brad said, he's positionless. Imagine playing a small ball lineup right now. The NBA is taken over by small ball right now. The Warriors, they had the most deadly small ball lineup in the league, and that's why they built a dynasty, almost three-peated. So you got, you could put Zion at the five sometimes for small ball. You could play small, put Ingram at the four, Drew, Lonzo. It's nasty, that small ball lineup, but you're still long, lanky. You got Zion at the center who could still rebound. You're not really going to take a dip with rebounding, and you could play super fast in Alvin Gentry's system. We're going to run teams ragged this year. It's going to be fun to watch. Get ready. Yeah, there's no doubt, and I think – the Pelicans are going to get a lot more coverage this year on ESPN is just because of Zion and, and, and his big personality, you know. So NBA Draft Thursday, we're all looking forward to it. Can't wait to uh, have Zion officially here. I mean, it's it's pretty much a lock at this point. But Thursday it'll be official and, and we'll be able to buy jerseys and everything. And it's, it's, it's a good time to, to be a, a New Orleans Pelicans fan. Finally. <laughs> So we got a lot of our free agent talk and discuss the NBA draft and 
talked about the blockbuster AD trade, but this podcast isn't just about the Pelicans. We're also going to be covering the Saints, a little bit of LSU, some River Parish high school football. So we want to get into the Saints a little bit. I mean, you know, we're in training camp now. We're excited. We got some new players, different faces. So, Bobby, what you got to say about the Saints? Oh, I am excited. I can't wait to go put my money down on them. (laughs) Can't wait to take that trip to Biloxi. Yeah, you I'm, about I'm, eight to one odds right it is. now to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm believing. I, I think we should have won it last year. I mean, of course, everybody does, but I'm, I'm we Super Bowl robbed. bound this year again. Did you we really got just, robbed. Did you really just mention last year? We all I thought know. we were past talking about this. So oh, we'll never, I would so never be we'll past. We'll never be past. Never. past those. Because of that comment, we're going to move to Bradley. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a real Saints fan, but I'm also a realist. And the thing about it to me is our window is closing, and it's closing fast. I feel like Drew has two, maybe two, productive years left. If we want to get it done, it has to be this year. I mean, I'd love to see him ride out like John Elway, maybe win two in a row, then he leaves. But it literally has to be this year. There's no in between. We have to. We have to get it done this year. We just have to. I agree. That's a good and way the, to put and it. The, the window's closing. Our front office knows this, and they have been trading future first round picks to move up and get better talent. That's what I love. Our front office. They know our window is one to two years, and they've really built our team like that. Exactly. And one thing about the Saints, we're never that big of players in free agency. But the one thing we do do, we keep our names in-house. The Cameron Jordan signing was so big for us. He's been a, a staple at defensive end for the last seven years. Now we have him extended. Yeah, you want to make sure he's happy. Big. That was very big. Mike we Thomas is up next, be. I think. Yes, Michael Thomas isn't going anywhere. He's a saint for life. So those are some, some really good points. I mean, we're all super excited about training camp. We're over last year. At least I know I am. Don't even really want to discuss it. We're just... Looking forward to next year and the final couple of years in Drew's career and see if we can make a run for it. I'm excited to see what uh, Davenport can do on a full season healthy. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I I'm think really he's excited. Take another leap. To, to, to use two freak. first rounders on this guy. and He's got to be serious. He's, 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 he's a freak. He's and a freak, so a, I'm ready to see some freakish Another stuff. thing, I, like, I really don't feel like um, Latavius Murray is a terrible substitute for Ingram. Oh, not at all. I don't feel... Not I mean, at all. I really all. don't think we're going to lose a step at the running back position, I don't believe especially it at all. with Camaro leading the way. Dude, you give a player of Camaro's skill set more touches, that's only a good thing. Murray's only now, a good I'm thing. I'm not necessarily agreeing with that completely because I'm not sure if Alvin is a three-down back, down back, but I really, really like Latavius. He's perfect for what we're going to do because it's always good to have a two-headed monster back there. Yeah, and I mean, he's a vet, too. You know, he's got exactly. he's got years under his belt. Exactly. Less I think Camara, injury, I mean, fumble-prone, too. Does yes. not fumble like Ingram. I think Camara is all. a three-down back, but... We want to prolong his career. Exactly. So limiting his touching is his touches is smart. But he does have the talent to be a three down back, no doubt. Yeah, you definitely need him healthy to do the things the Saints try to do on a on a daily basis. I mean some other things too, you know, Taysom Hill, Teddy Bridgewater. I want to get into that a little bit. What's going on there? I think Taysom Hill is I mean, everybody knows he's just a Swiss Army knife. He can do everything. He's a legit third quarterback most teams in NFL they'll keep three quarterbacks on the roster and whenever you have a quarterback that runs down and covers kicks that's unheard of that's unheard of the kid is special I mean he can even he can even catch passes he can do it all I really like Taysom and Teddy Bridgewater is a very very good backup he was a starter in this league he was a playoff starter in this league I think the, the Saints basically we just have to win it all if we don't win at all, it's a letdown, and, and that's just the way it is right now. We know Drew's window's closing, our window's closing with Drew. So right now, we have to get it done. 2019 has to be the year. Completely Yeah, agree. right now, we're not looking ahead. We're looking to this year. I mean, we're all in. So, I mean, get resigning Teddy Bridgewater smart. If Breeze does go down, God forbid, for two games, three games, you putting in Teddy Bridgewater who has – NFL experience in there. Are you giving yourself the best possible chance to somehow come and win them games, even with Breeze right. going down? Right. Just kind of like with the with the whole Eagles situation, how Foles led them, you know, to a Super Bowl win. You need to have that backup plan. Yeah, and case. home field is super. You need home field. Saints in the dome. With some refs that uh, aren't paid off. Yeah. Now, uh, I know we signed Jerry Cook, but the number two receiver is still wide open. There's not really a name established there. I really like Cam Meredith. I also like 
Kirkwood. Kirkwood's out of Temple. He's coming into his second year. He really came on towards the end of the year last year. And the guy from UCF, number 10. Traquan Smith? Or Traquan, Traquan Smith? Smith. I really like Traquan, yeah. Traquan Smith. I feel like our receivers, they're not many big names besides Michael Thomas, but they're good. They're very good role players. And also, we picked up a tight end in the draft from Notre Dame. Can't think of his name right now. It's a late round pick. Yeah, big that's six, a sleeper pick. Yes, big six foot seven tight end. You throw it up, he's got ball skills. That's the type of guy Drew Brees makes. I don't care what anybody says, Jimmy Graham was made by Drew Brees. I agree. And that was proven when he went to Seattle and nobody heard his name anymore. He's at Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers and right. still still a less version of himself. Exactly. Drew Brees makes players. And when like a big body like him, Drew's gonna put the ball to where only he can get there. And that's just we're set up, man. We're, we're really set up that Yeah, I mean, as far as, our, as far as our other receivers, obviously, we haven't even really seen a ton of Meredith because he's had injury issues. But I, I, really, I do feel like he could be a big part of the offense. And obviously, Traquan Smith has already made a name for himself in our uh, offense. A guy you can't I forget agree. about either Des is Ted I mean, he's aging, Ted but he's Ginn. still got 4-3, four, four, three, maybe 4-3-9 four, now that he's getting a little right. older. I agree. You know, he's still a track star, could still take the top off still any taking defense. taking the top Definitely. off Definitely. And, and, like, what, you know... What's going to happen with Des Bryant, I guess, is still kind of up in the air, too. I, I think everybody wanted to see him in a Saints uniform and getting balls thrown to him by Drew. And who's to say that still can't happen, you know? Don't be surprised this year if we see a really run-heavy Saints offense. We, we have Drew Brees, so we're always going to be able to throw the ball. But whenever the Saints are running the ball effectively, that's when they're really dangerous. Yeah, and our offensive line is top five in the league right now. We we could bully ball teams down the down the, the field, 14, 15 play drives for touchdowns. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of good stuff going on with the Saints right now. That was our take on that situation. And like I said, we're also going to be covering LSU uh, football, basketball, River Parish high school football. So I want to hand that off to our specialist in, in those categories, uh, be rad and let JJ go at it with him a little bit. Brad? So uh, right now in the River Parish football, it's really going to be a fun year to watch. Everybody knows St. Charles Catholic. They're a power in 3A last year. They went to the semifinals with a really young team. They were, they were turning their quarterback, returning eight starters on defense. They're going to be a force to uh, deal with in 3A. And to me, the team to watch in the River Parish is East St. John. Where has East St. John been the last few years? It's not the East St. John we all grew up on. They made a head coaching change. They went get Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown. He was the offensive coordinator at Scotlandville for the last five years. And that was a power in 5A in Baton Rouge. And the first thing he did was went get Larry Dotree, the old East St. John head coach that led East St. John to all of those teams that were that were number one ranked in the state. I really think East St. John is going to be a problem in 5A. So we got a little bit of uh, River Parish coverage. Brad's going to cover that throughout the season for us. Obviously, it's not football season right now, but when the time does come, we're going to have you covered there. We're also going to have you covered with all things LSU, football, basketball. JJ, you want to break a little something down for us? Yeah, about a, a little bit about LSU basketball. Everybody knows about the Will Wade scandal, but guess what? He's back. And with him comes another five-star recruit, Trenton Wofford, small forward, five-star. And with Will Wade comes back, all of them players that declared for the draft, they tested it, but they're coming back. Skylar Mays, we got Taylor coming back, Javante Smart. So if you thought LSU basketball was about to be out of the top 25, guess what? We ain't going nowhere. As long as Will Wade's the head coach of LSU basketball, LSU basketball is going to be relevant. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we did some big things last year, made some noise, made our way into the tournament, and I think the, the best things are, are yet to come. That's facts. And also, let's not forget LSU football. Not that they went anywhere, they're back. And we're, retur we're returning a quarterback. I feel like Joe Burrow has a chance to be a very good starting quarterback in the SEC. We're returning a lot of starters on defense. And the sleeper for me is our wide receiver core. Mm. We got Jamar Chase, who's going to be a sophomore. He was a five-star guy out of Archbishop Rummel. We got Terrence Marshall, who was a five-star guy, number one receiver in Louisiana from Parkway High School. I mean, we just got 
big guys everywhere. We got D. Anderson. He's going to be the lone senior wide receiver from DeSoto, Texas. We got guys. We got studs everywhere. That's what LSU does. I feel like this could be the fi- this could be the year we finally challenge Alabama again. And they got that monster you can turn around and hand it to, too. Oh, coming my in. God. We got a guy from Destrand coming in, John Emery. Remember the name. Remember the name John Emery. He's a beast. We'll hear about him in the NFL in three years. And like you said, them wide receivers, you ain't going to be able to stack the box on Emory. You got, a, you got a good quarterback and a lot of weapons. Oh, and the main thing that nobody knows, LSU went get the Saints passing game coordinator, Joe Brady. LSU made sure to go get an NFL mind and bring him into our offense. That's going to help us a lot. Yep, no doubt. And I mean, you know, I guess we don't really have to say much about the defense. It's always strong. LSU defense. DBU. One more name I wanted to bring up, Ike. The big Samoan from Utah. Number one defensive tackle in the country from Utah. I don't know how LSU got him, but we did. He will be a starter and an impact player as a freshman. Let's get it. So there's your take on LSU. LSU basketball, football, River Parish High School, Saints, Pelicans. We're going to cover it all. This is the first edition of the Crescent City Connection podcast. We're going to close it out now. And if you enjoyed listening to this first edition, please hit subscribe. Please give us some feedback in our comments. We're also up on YouTube. You can hit subscribe there, leave comments there, share our videos. We'll be on Facebook. You can like our page. You can share our videos. Tell your friends and family about us. We're going to make this thing big and be bringing you guys hot takes all season long on everything sports-related in New Orleans.